Shalom and good afternoon from Jerusalem Jane. Shabbat is just around the corner. It's coming in very early. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and if you were outside, you could be wearing a t-shirt. But I am cold through my bones after the horrendous testimony that I have been reading this week of more news coming out of the atrocities that Hamas committed on that brutal, brutal day tomorrow. It will be five weeks. I just read a testimony <clears throat> from, a from a doctor in Soroka Hospital. And he said, my aunt and uncle were living in one of the kibbutzes near the Gaza border. Their neighbors, every week, they went to Eris Crossing and they received families of sick children being treated inside Israel and they brought them out to hospital all, all over Israel to get treated. He said here in Soroka Hospital, I gave the best treatment to sick people living inside Gaza, coming to my hospital. I gave them the best care. They left healthy and they went back into the Gaza Strip. His uncle was brutally murdered by Hamas terrorists and his aunt is now held captive inside the Gaza Strip. And he said, my neighbors, the neighbors of my aunt and uncle who brought these people from Gaza into the hospitals, we don't know yet if they were murdered or if they are held hostage inside the Gaza Strip. Now you can hear red alert on my phone. He said here in our hospital, we are doing the best. We are giving the best treatment to everyone who is coming here. Only 30 kilometers away in one of the biggest hospitals inside the Gaza Strip are hiding, in his words, the butchers, the killers of our people. My aunt is probably hiding under one of these hostages, or Hamas is probably hiding my aunt together with the other hostages beneath these hospitals. And then he said, is it some of the people that I treated? Some of the people who came into Israel and I gave them the best cares. Are they or some of their friends or their family members, some of the killers right now who is hiding beneath that hospital? This is the doctor. This is his testimony. The words that I just told him, that I just told you about. So many testimonies every week especially children, people with cancer, they came into Israel, they got the best treatment, the best treatment, and they went back into the Gaza Strip, and some of their friends, their family members, were the one who committed this brutal and heinous attack towards the Jewish people. This is just one of the testimonies. Today, we had a big rocket barrage coming towards central Israel, and also into Tel Aviv, and that was the first time into that part of the country since Tuesday. Two people, one was slightly and one was moderately uh, injured from shrapnel in Tel Aviv. Uh, like I said, we just had a rocket alert now in the northern part of Israel. So things are still very, very tense here. We need your prayers. Uh, the Israeli Defense Forces are going deeper and deeper inside Gaza. They are finding more weapon manufacturing sites. They are finding more weapons, tunnel shafts. They are battling with many of these terrorists. And then people inside Gaza are literally, they are being shielded by the Israeli Defense Forces. As Israel has been telling the civilian population for weeks, we are not at war with you. We are not coming for you. We are coming after these evil Hamas terrorists and Islamic Jihad terrorists who has been brutalized um, their own people for 20 years. So Israel is telling the civilian population, move, 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 move to the south, move to the south. Yesterday, I think it was 50,000 people who was moving from the south, uh, from the north to the south. Again, today, people are being evacuated. And what is happening? Is Hamas interested in the civilian population in Gaza? 
for their well well being for their well being no they never was and they don't are today actually they have they have sharpshooters who has been shooting at some of the people who is moving they have been blocking the roads for people who has been moving they don't want the well, the best for the civilian population so as a matter of fact the israeli army is protecting and have created this safe passage this safe corridor for the civilian population inside the gaza strip to move from the north to the south hamas is also controlling what news they are seeing inside the gaza strip not letting them know that the israeli defense forces are taking ground and they are going uh, deeper and deeper into the gaza strip so all of a sudden they are waking up and they are seeing israeli tanks in their streets again because they are being lied to uh, under these hospitals especially the biggest hospitals like this doctor just gave a testimony that's where hamas is hiding that's where they have their headquarters deep deep beneath uh, under these hospitals Israel knows that the civilian populations inside the Gaza Strip knows that. As a matter of fact, Al Jazeera was live streaming. Was it yesterday? Um, and all of a sudden, you see Hamas terrorists inside these hospitals, documenting it to the whole world. So Israel is moving in, and uh, people have started evacuating from these hospitals, as the Israeli Defense Forces are saying, we give you time to evacuate these hospitals because we will go in after these terrorists. Uh, so people begin to realize we need to evacuate again. Now we are seeing of live stream, 50,000 people every day are evacuating. Of course, this is not something that Hamas wants to be shown to the world because it shows that they are losing ground inside the Gaza Strip. So again, things are very, very tense and we need your prayers. Uh, yesterday, I shared a video about 700 people who has been interrogated, uh, who is giving testimony to the police, to the intelligence agencies of the horrific disasters, uh, atrocities, mutilation, rapes uh, that they witnessed. So they are building cases towards uh, all of these terrorists so they can try them. Uh, these terrorists are spilling the beans telling what they did, telling the command they got to go in here and to murder the children because one day they're going to grow up and be Israeli soldiers. So here we are on another Friday with this country being traumatized with so many family who has to light the Shabbat candles and sit around the table, but they don't have their daughter, their son, their grandmother, their grandfather, their father, their mother, because either they were brutally murdered or they are kidnapped, being held inside the Gaza Strip. And there are still people who don't know what happened to my loved one. There are still people who are not accounted for. And, and that that will be like that because pe houses were burned to the grounds and there are simply people who won't be identified. They are bodies so mutilated that they don't have a chance to identify them. So there's not a family here who's not impacted. Many, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced. They lost their home. They lost everything they have. They own nothing. The clothes on their back, the food for their kids and everything, that it's been donated. They don't have anything. And what happened today? Rockets are still flying in. Uh, millions of people have to get up and run for shelter, uh, being traumatized from all of that. People have lost their homes. Uh, so this is on all areas. On all areas you can possibly imagine, this country is suffering and this country um, is, is, is having severe PTSD and trauma. At the same time, you see really the spirit of the Jewish people. You see how they unite. You see how they come together. You see how you know they go and help and they go and milk the cows. They go and pick up the grapes and the red bell peppers and you know people are helping in any way they possibly can they are coming united as brothers as sisters as one people um helping in any way they can they are they are they are collecting food for the soldiers they're collecting food and items for the people displaced one day when i was out shopping in a supermarket they were standing collecting you know like do you have anything you can give away because we we want to donate it to the people inside the Gaza, people living close to the Gaza border. They lost everything. They don't have anything. 
So I gave them all the shampoo and soap and some of the food I just bought and I said, here, just take it. Do you need more? And they were like, no, it's fine. Thank you so much. So you have to remember that people are displaced. People have lost everything they have. Uh, this country has shut. There are no, there are no tourists. People are losing incomes. Children are traumatized. Uh, children saw their parents being murdered. Children saw their siblings being murdered. Uh, children are sitting now with having a sister or a brother or, or parents being kidnapped inside the Gaza Strip. I mean, they have had to bring in thousands and thousands of psychologists, uh, psychiatrists to talk to children, to talk to adults. I mean, we all need someone to talk to because what we have witnessed, we haven't seen since the Holocaust. It's, it's unbelievable. Yesterday was crystal night, the night of broken glass. And here we are today uh, in 2023. And in one day, 1400 Israelis were brutally murdered, including foreign nationals, foreign workers, and many of the, of the people being held inside the Gaza Strip as hostages. They are actually foreign national. Uh, there was a video coming out of an Israeli Arab. Um, they brutally attacked him. They stripped him naked. They tortured him knowing that we want to murder Jews, but this was an Israeli Arab, but let's just kill him. Uh, so the most atrocious, atrocious, atro you can't even imagine what they did. And yet we have people around the world saying it never happened or they deserved it because they stole Palestinian land. It's not about land. It's never about land. It's about a sick demonic hatred uh, towards the Jewish people that has been trying to annihilate them for years and years. This is a basic um, crimes against humanity that took place down here. This is a battle about good and evil, light and darkness. You cannot for such a time as this stay quiet. Things are very tense in Judea and Samaria, in the city of Jenin with all of these terrorists uh, that was taking out uh, shooting at the Israeli defense forces. I have shared so many years over the years, so many videos from Jenin where you see all of these terrorists um, in full military uniform. And today it's boiling because they are having funerals for all of these terrorists. So please pray for all the men and women in uniform who is on high alert in Israel, on all of Israel's borders, on the north, on the south, uh, and also out in Judea and Samaria, here in Jerusalem. They should be home in peace. You know, it's Shabbat. They should be home with their families. But uh, instead, this country is on a high, high alert. So for such a time as this, we are standing with Israel for the Jewish people, for their right to their God-given homeland. This is the only Jewish state in the entire world and God gave it to them in an internal government covenant. If you don't know anything else, just know that this is the land that God chose for his namesake. He put his name down here. He gave it an internal covenant to the Jewish people, which means you cannot occupy something that you own. This is the homeland that God gave to the Jewish people. Shabbat Shalom. I might be scaling back a little bit again for my own well-being, emotionally and mentally, unless something major happens tomorrow. And I feel guilty just even saying that because things are happening all the time. But for my own well-being, I will pull back a little bit tomorrow and rest during Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Bye.